I want to share in this video a Pydantic tip that can help improve the performance of your applications that are using Pydantic models. And notably, I want to look at the model construct method. And this essentially allows you to construct a Pydantic model without the validations and type coercions and so on. So it allows you to instantiate the model, but it doesn't have all of the validation logic being performed. And that actually can improve performance under certain circumstances. Now, I would say that that's most useful for performance critical code. So if you're sure the data is already valid, for example, it's coming from a trusted source like a database with a well-defined schema, you can save some CPU cycles by ignoring the validation step when you instantiate these models using the model construct method. And that has performance improvements. And this is particularly pronounced with complex or nested data, as we'll see in this video. So this is a video that's going to be useful for Python developers who are using Pydantic and they want better performance or deeper understanding of how models are instantiated. So let's get started. Before we do so, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. We've got a link just below the video. Thank you to everyone who's contributed to that. And if you want to join the channel, we've opened up memberships as well. Now let's get started and look at Pydantic models. And models are one of the primary ways to define a schema in Pydantic. And they're simply classes that inherit from Pydantic's base model. Now we're going to look at a method in this video called model construct. So let's search for that and you can see it listed here under model methods and properties. And model construct allows you to create models without running validation. And there's a whole page on this topic that we're going to reference very soon. Now notice a couple of use cases here when you might want to skip the validation step. Firstly, when you're working with complex data that's already known to be valid. So for performance reasons, you don't want to rerun validation if you already know it's valid. And also if you have one or more validator functions that are non-item potent. And the final point here, when one or more of the validator functions has side effects that you don't want to be triggered. Now the latter two examples are when some kind of validation triggers some side effects or if you run it more than once, it has some kind of non-item potent effect. But I think the top one is important. That is when you have complex data, you already know it's valid. It's coming from a trusted source and you don't want to rerun validation. Now here is a warning, model construct does not do any validation so that it can create models that are invalid. And you should only ever use the model construct method with data that has already been validated or that you definitely trust. So for example, don't be using this if you're taking user input, all kinds of input that are coming from untrusted sources that you don't have control of. In that case, you shouldn't be using model construct and you should stick to normal Pydantic practices. And I want to also note before we go into the example that in Pydantic version two, the performance gap between validation and between using model construct has been narrowed considerably. And for simple models, going with validation actually can be faster. So if you are using model construct for performance reasons, you might want to profile your use case before you assume that it's naturally going to be faster. So let's introduce an example here. And what we're going to do is go to VS Code. And we have this pedantic model called Spaceship. And this contains five fields, as we can see here, and each field has its own data type. Now, when we instantiate a spaceship and pass in the data required for the model class, for example, here, the name of Voyager X and so on, Pydantic will by default perform validation. And that involves things like type coercions. So here we have fuel level being set to 85.5, but that is a string and that will be coerced to a float because in the class, you can see that particular property is of type float. And the same for other fields here, such as warp drive, that will be coerced to a Boolean. Now we're going to run this application and it's going to print the spaceship to the terminal. So let's bring up the terminal here and I'm going to use the UV run command and it's going to be demo.py. And you can see we have the spaceship and indeed the type coercions have occurred. For example, fuel level here is of type floating point number and warp drive is set to true and so on. So what's happened here is that Pydantic has performed the basic validation that's built in. We haven't defined anything complicated on the class. There's no validator functions or anything, but the basic type coercions have been applied. And that's why we see these fields here having the correct type as defined on the model class. But I want to imagine the scenario where this data comes from a trusted source and we might want to skip that validation and type coercion and so on. So what we can do here is we can use a different approach. And all we need to do is take the spaceship and call the model underscore construct method. And we pass all of the same data in here. Now this is going to construct a spaceship based on the data that we pass in. But notice that we are passing in invalid types here. For example, as we just mentioned, the fuel level is a string. The warp drive is also a string. These should not be strings according to the model definition. So as mentioned earlier, model construct can result in invalid models. So if I save this file now that we're using model construct, 
we can go to the terminal and rerun the demo file here. And notice now that we have a string for the fuel level. So essentially we have an invalid model based on this definition that we had above. So that's the danger of model construct. So what we can do is fix the data that's being passed in here. So I'm going to remove this and replace it with what we have here. And now fuel level is a number, a floating point number, and the warp drive is a boolean. So that's the correct data. What we can do is go back to the terminal, and this time we get the correct data for the spaceship, and it's a valid model. But that highlights that when you want to use model construct, you need to make sure that the data is indeed valid. It comes from a trusted source and has a schema that you kind of know about before you use that method. Now, why would you want to go to the trouble of using model construct and potentially getting an invalid model? Well, you should only do this for a start when you are loading the data from trusted sources, but also if you're optimizing for speed. And as mentioned earlier, you also want to profile what you're doing to make sure it is actually faster. But we're going to launch an example now, and we're going to look at the performance of model construct with somewhat complex data. But you definitely don't want to use this approach when you're accepting user input or when you need that validation and coercion. So let's now move on to a performance uh, comparison. What we're going to do is replace this data here. We're not just going to have a spaceship. So I'm going to remove this and paste in some new code here, and we're going to have a look at this. So now we have three Pydantic models. We have the spaceship model, but we've added a couple of extra things to this. So for the fuel level, we now have some extra validation. This is not just a floating point number, but it now should be between 0 and 100. And we also have an engine applied to the spaceship, and that's a new Pydantic type that we've defined called engine. And you can see that class above. And an engine has some fields as well, model, thrust, and fuel system. And you can see the fuel system is another Pydantic model subclass. And that contains its own fields as well. So now we have this nested data. A spaceship has an engine, an engine has a fuel system, and each of those entities are represented by a Pydantic model. Now what I'm going to do underneath this is define some sample data. So let's remove the previous code and we can paste this in. So we have sample data that represents that nested data that we have above. So we have the top level information here for the spaceship. And then for the engine, we define the data that we need for that engine model, as well as the fuel system, which is a further nested type. So this is fairly complex, but in real life, you might actually have much more complex data with much more nested information and also a lot more fields in general. But this is going to suffice for this example. What I want to do now is instantiate 1 million validated models and also 1 million unvalidated or constructed models using the model construct method. So I'm not going to write all of that out by hand. What we're going to do is paste in some code here and we're going to have a look at this. So we have a count of 1 million. And then what we're going to do on line 44 in a list comprehension is instantiate 1 million spaceship objects, passing that sample data in. And we're using the range statement here to do that 1 million times. And then we're using the Python time module and the performance counter for benchmarking to calculate the start and end times. And we'll take the difference of those at the end to calculate how long this particular operation has taken. And we do the exact same thing on the lines below, except we use the model construct method instead of just instantiating the spaceship. And that is going to skip the validation steps built into Pydantic. And again, we're just passing that sample data in, and we're going to do that 1 million times and calculate the time difference between this and the above approach where we instantiate the spaceship directly, which performs the validation. And then at the bottom here, we're going to print out the time difference between approach one and approach two using model construct and we're going to see which one is the quickest. So let's bring back the terminal just now, and we're going to run this script, uv run at demo.py, and let's see how long this takes, and we'll resume the video after this has completed. So that's now completed, and you can see the results below. With validation, it takes 15 and a half seconds. Without using model construct, it takes just under 10 seconds. Now there's not a massive time saving there, but it is quite substantial. And the more complex your data is, and the more nested data that you have, and the more custom validations that you're doing on your Pydantic models, for example, defining validation functions that should be run for particular fields, the more of that that you have, the greater the saving is going to be when you use model construct. And there are some situations where you might have much more complex data. For example, if you're using Pydantic in data engineering pipelines, for example, but as long as that data is coming from a trusted source, for example, a database that you control, then you can potentially skip the validation to improve the performance of those types of pipelines. But of course you should do some profiling on that. Don't always assume it's going to be faster. 
It kind of depends on the shape of the data and the amount of custom validation that you have and also what Pydantic can optimize internally. But if you're pulling data out of your databases and that data has a known structure and known data types and so on, then you can potentially use model construct. Now, on the other hand, I think for most web applications that are using Pydantic, for example, with fast API, you're probably better off in that case, just instantiating the spaceship as normal or whatever your model is, and then getting that validation performed out of the box. And that's especially important when you're dealing with user input and data that's coming from untrusted sources. So to summarize this video, you can build your Pydantic models without that validation step using the model construct method, but use that with caution and always check that your actual use of that, if you've decided to use it, is actually improving the performance using profiling tools. So in this video, I hope you've learned a little bit more about Pydantic and learned about the model construct method. If you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page that's linked just below the video. And if you want to support the channel by becoming a member, then we've opened memberships as well. And thank you to everyone who has joined the channel. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.